Okay, so now I'm resuming. Fast in my explanations, uh, but I will try to cover a general introduction about about the the what we're gonna do about Asian based modeling. The two versions of our uh, framework. What we uh, uh, plan to do in the next steps, and finally our conclusions. Well, um, Miri already introduced me. I will not uh, spend more time with this. Well, why we are here today? Well, we are here because the initial government governmental uh, responses to COVID-19 were a disaster. Some of them, indeed, still are a disaster. And the second wave of infections is uh, here or is very close to happen. We still uh, have, not, uh, have not a vaccine widely available. And the non-pharmaceutical interventions is still the best way to fight against the pandemic, OK? When I say non-pharmaceutical non intervention, I'm talking about social isolation, social distancing, masks, etc. Okay, so these are the best tools we have in hand to fight the pandemic in this moment. Well, uh, we, are, we are here to help the public decision makers to plan the best non-pharmaceutical interventions in order to minimize the number of, the, of hospitalized people. This is what we know uh, before as the flatten the curve, uh, to minimize the number of deaths and to minimize the economical impact of these uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions. Try to minimize the economical losses. Uh, thinking also in uh, the post-pandemic world. So how do we, we going to do this? By modeling, simulation, optimization, and decision making. So we try to model the, the variables, model the, 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 the effects of the pandemics, simulate several scenarios with different interventions, um, analyze the response variables, optimize these effects, and make a decision of the several alternatives that will be generated by the optimization process. What is the simulation? Uh, I believe that everybody knows what is the simulation, but let's uh, review it. We have a, a set of parameters, and with these parameters, we introduce it in a model this model uh, uh, make a relationship between the, the decision variables, the constants about the real world, and make an inference about, uh, uh, make inference of several response variables. We compare these this response variables, the simulation results, with the data collected in the real world and refine the parameters. And we do repeat this process until we have a very accurate model of the real world. So uh, this is a iterative process. We have the, this parameter set divided basically in two uh, subsets. The constants, the, the demographic, social, and uh, epidemiological uh, uh, variables decision variables that are the, the, the social aspects that we can make interventions on it. We have the internal state of the system that we, in the great part of the time, we can't observe. And we have the response variables that are statistics about that internal state that we can not directly observe. So the simulation, it's uh, iterate over the, uh, the status, this internal state of the system and observe these response variables and try to make interventions in these decision variables to achieve certain uh, uh, desired response variable. This is the simulation. This is what we're going to do here. So the, this model is a function 
that uh, uh, associates, that make the transition between the actual state, the current state of the system, to the next state of the system. It's kind of a, a probability density that associates the uh, current state um, given the set of parameters to the evolution of this state in the time, to the next state. So uh, let's talk about the agent-based uh, simulations. But before talk about the agent-based simulations, we have to talk ab about the model-based simulations and the worldwide famous SIR, Susceptible Infected Recovered Model. This is the, uh, the most employed model uh, of the pandemic evolution, but they uh, have a lot of variants. Uh, as say years, say years, and um, as uh, S I R X with the the exogenous variables. Well, there, there is uh, there are a lot of of these models uh, in the literature. These models uh, are simple to implement and they are computationally cheap, but they are very restrict. They abstract one or few effects of the whole system. Our problem is that the society, that pandemic that we want to model, it's very complex and dynamic. And this, these uh, model-based simulations uh, do not cover all the variables we want, we are interested. So it's, uh, it's very important to understand each word of the complex dynamic systems, like the society, uh, uh, an economy, and a pandemic. The systems are whole, uh, made of small parts, the components. The, these components have many relationship, relationships of cause and effect. Uh, the global behavior of the system is aggregate of the local behaviors of these components and in the emergence, the, 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 compl the complex behavior emerge from the local and uh, uh, relationship in the local behaviors of the, the, these components. And this behavior changes along the time in the way that uh, each state, the current state, depends on the, the previous states. So, agent-based simulations are, um, are the best tool to simulate uh, complex dynamic systems. Uh, uh, agent-based simulations are composed by a population of agents. Each agent has, has its own internal state, has uh, its own actions. Uh, each agent interacts with the outer agents and the, the environment. We have a shared environment that affects and is affected by the agents and an iteration loop that simulates the time. And uh, each iteration corresponds to a discrete unit of time. So the global state of the system is the aggregation of the individual states of the agents. This is the agent-based simulation. So, we have this shared environment in green. We have the set of parameters that are used to configure the shared environment and to create the agents, the uh, initial state of the agents. Okay, you, you, we have the response uh, variables uh, for each uh, iteration. So you can see we have a red agent in the middle of our shared environment. We can consider this agent the uh, infected agent. And we have the white agents. Uh, uh, these are the, the susceptible agents. And we have that uh, blue agent, that uh, already immune, immunized uh, agent. So, uh, you can see that this uh, infected agent is closer, it's close to three other agents. We have uh, influence over three other agents, and it also receives influence of these uh, three other agents. We can say that these agents are sharing information. What is share information? They are sharing viruses, they are sharing uh, money. Okay, 
they are sharing uh, uh, several things. So uh, each one of these agents are in, uh, in touch, are connected, are uh, in contact with other. So I can say that this agent in red infected the other agents. You can see that the, the, uh, during the time the agents are moving. So the now infected agents are moving and along the time it will uh, get in touch with other agents and will infect other agents. But also as, as an effect of the time, some agents will be uh, recovered. So we are talking about viruses, about uh, infections, but we are, are forgetting that people in contact, in contact with uh, other people uh, share money, share economical resources, not only viruses. So we can simulate the, the, the two aspects together. Finally, we have an um, algorithm of the Asian business simulation. It's a very simple, I can use the, the, the parameters to initialize the environment, to initialize the population. I have the, the major iteration loop that is the, that corresponds to the time and the inner loop that uh, correspond to, to the loop over the agents in the population. So I call each agent of the population to execute its, its actions over the environment, over the, the other uh, agents, and uh, all of this condition into the parameters. After, after this loop, I will generate the statistics and the response variables for each iteration of the main loop and then return these response variables. Though, so this is the agent based simulation. It's a very simple uh, algorithm, not complex, uh, where I can simulate very complex uh, dynamics just by configuring uh, small and locate local uh, actions of the agents. The main problem with the agent-based simulation it is it, uh, its computational cost. It's very expensive. So uh, let's talk about our framework, the COVID ABS, the first version. Well, uh, our, our, this tool born as an educational kit. It was published in a magazine, uh, the Taurus Data Science uh, at Medium. I don't know if you know Medium platform. It was published in April 6th. So this is the link uh, of this first publication. So, this this uh, we had no no great pretensions with this 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 tool at the beginning. It was just a, a, an educational tool to show the people how the the pandemics uh, will spread and how uh, it will affect the economy. But it one of the first models to mix economical and epidemiological effects. It made a, a lot of success. Uh, uh, this package is entirely uh, developed in Python, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. And it's a very simple uh, tool. We have three classes. The agent uh, with its internal states and actions, the simulation with the population, with the, the, the shared environment, the global uh, loop, and we have a, a more complex uh, kind of simulation called multi-population simulations with we can aggregate uh, several uh, populations that are overlaid. So uh, we have some the main parameters of the simulation. We have these the general parameters, the uh, environment space, the size of population, number of iterations. Uh, each iteration corresponds to a, a whole day. The age distribution of the population, so we, this is a, a demographic uh, variable. It's a table, uh, the amount of the population for each uh, age interval. 
the mobility and this mobility is one of our main decision variables uh, to control how amount uh, an agent can move along the time it's uh, our uh, social distancing and social isolation policies so we have also epidemiological parameters uh, the contagion rate the probability of contagion the probability of uh, uh, an asymptomatic uh, infected person become needs the of, of hospitalization the probability of uh, of uh, a severity case uh, the, uh, of death the minimal distance that are considered for contagion and the, one of the most important variables is the critical limit of the healthcare system as the percentage of the population that can be uh, hospitalized simultaneously. Above this limit, we don't have uh, capacity in the hospitals to attend more people. So we have some uh, studies. Uh, this study is the Imperial College about the, the, some of the epidemiological parameters as contagion rate, severity, mortality, and other, and, other, uh, and other parameters. Finally, we have economic parameters as the total wealth of the population, the distribution of the wealth, and the base income and expense by iteration. Okay, with this several, this is an, uh, just an, uh, a small plot of the wealth distribution, also known as Lorentz curve. Lorentz curve. Well, the agents in this first version have basically three uh, three actions: the movement. Uh, we randomize uh, the movement of the agents. The the move randomly over the, the shared environment and but if the agent is sick it will not move and we uh, we consider that this uh, sick agent is um, in the hospital so we check the distance between the agents and to check if they have contact also we have the amount of movement of each agent and the expenses and the incomes of the agents are uh, in function of the amount of movement of the agents. So the amount of movement, the delta M, represent the work. So an um, agent that have a great mobility also have, uh, also performed a lot of work, okay? Well, so this is the workflow of each agent. The, uh, it's a very simple uh, wor uh, workflow. They move, update the status, and update the wealth, given its mobility, and repeat all again. So we have also the, the epidemiological, uh, epidemiological status of the agents. The, the great part of uh, the agents uh, are created susceptible, a small part of them is created infected, and other small part is created immune. So along the time of the simulation, the susceptible agents will get in touch with the infected agents and we, we can simulate the viral spreading. We have a lot of response variables divided in uh, epidemiological uh, response variables and economic response variables. Um, the economic response variables are uh, concerned the amount of wealth created or lost. So uh, you can access the source code and the, the experiments to check all of these experiments. I won't go uh, deep explaining the meaning of each scenario uh because of the time but we have you have the links to to access the code and the experiments and the text and the conclusions you can see 
in this uh, simulation that the agents move randomly over the simulation space. The uh, uh, light blue agents are the susceptible, the dark gray dots are the infected agents, the black uh, dots are the dead agents. So in this graph you can see the evolution of the uh, uh, pandemic and this dashed line here is the critical uh, limit of the healthcare system. When the number of the hospitalized cases crosses this line, the number of dead people increases a lot because we, uh, the society does not have uh, healthcare resources to take care of all of the, uh, sorry, the society do not have uh, uh, healthcare resources to take care of all sick people. So people start to die with uh, more velocity. Okay, so this is what we're talking about to flatten the curve, to try to avoid this uh, orange line to cross the critical limit of the healthcare system. At the right uh, graph, you can see the economical impact. We, uh, in this scenario, we do not, we do nothing. We don't make any uh, social intervention, any uh, uh, social isolation, distancing, nothing. So, economy is start, uh, continues to grow. In certain points, you can, you can see that there are some losses uh, uh, concerned with the deaths and the number of people that are uh, hospitalized. Well, using this, this, this uh, tool, we performed several scenarios uh, with different conditions, initial conditions, uh, to try to, to verify certain as, uh, assumptions that were made at the beginning of the pandemic. Okay. One of the, these, these assumptions is to restrict the mobility only for infected people. But the problem is how to identify all the infected people, main the, the asymptomatic cases. So there are lots of scenarios, lock, complete lockdown, uh, conditional or, or part, uh, part, uh, conditional lockdown vertical isolation uh, to separate the elderly and most more risky people only the more risky and elderly people um, masks the use the, the the spreading of masks and social distancing so there are a lot of scenarios then we make a lot of success and attract the attention of the researchers and media. But, uh, Petronius, you, you okay. can have like 10 more minutes, even 15, so you don't need to hurry. Okay. Okay. This is good because there's a lot of things to talk yet. <laughs> so, the economic modeling of the first version is very simplistic and naive. Not really, uh, not ready for a scientific, scientific journal publication. The second version of our tool improved all aspects of the simulation, all. So we, we turned that unpretentious educational tool to a serious framework to help uh, the public uh, managers to simulate health and economical effects of social interventions. So we just published this, this journal at Cal Solitons and Fractals. This is the journal with the title COVID ABS, an agent-based model of COVID-19 epidemic to simulate health and economical effects of social distancing and interventions with our great team of minds and SIDIC, my uh, research group here at EF and NG. So, what's new in COVID-ABS 2.0? We have 
five kinds of agents instead of one kind of agents of the first issue. Now we have the uh, an agent to represent the government, an agent to represent the healthcare system, an agent to represent the business, uh, houses, and people. And each one of these agents have different actions, have different internal states, have different interactions one with other. So, if you remember the first version where, where we uh, have only uh, people, Asia, agents, that move randomly over the uh, shared space, no more. The second version is much more complex and well organized. We have the government, we have several business, we have homeless people, we have people that live together in houses, making families and hospitals. And you see that the simulation now, it's uh, each iteration corresponds to one hour. The first version, each iteration of the simulation corresponds to a whole day. So we have a routine, for example, 6 p.m. everybody eats in their houses. Then they left the houses to go to, to school or to downtown or to the business. Then they have lunch time that they uh, walk freely to go have lunch. Then they go back to the business. The homeless uh, walk randomly. The children go to the school. Uh, after the work, after the work time, they walk freely to get uh, to go to the leisure and uh, to go to the bar and to go to the gym etc then later in the night they get back to their houses so the the uh, movement of the people agents is coordinated it's uh, they uh, they are induced to correspond to a normal routine of, of uh, people in a society, okay? The agents, uh, any kind of agents have routines, monthly routines for the economical agents as the payment day, the wages, taxes. They are weekly routines. Uh, we have uh, three days. The people stay at house or go to some leisure uh, do free movement. They have work days that they go uh, stay at home, go to work, go to leisure, and then go back to leisure. And they have daily routines according to the, the hour of the day. They can be sleeping at house, working at the business, have lunch uh, freely, uh, working back in the business, and then go to leisure and to rest. So we go back to the contact rules uh, while moving. The, the distance between the agents are always being measured. And after, if the contagion, if the distance between the agents uh, falls lesser than the contagion distance, we have the possibility of an infection. And if the distance of an agent falls uh, lesser, than the, lesser than the business distance, we, uh, these two agents are making business. They are exchanging money or working. Okay? So work is also exchanging money. We have a more complex epidemiological states, now this, this, uh, this state diagram consider the incubation time, transmission time, recovering time, the, we have the uh, uh, more uh, precise contagion probabilities, um, uh, severity probabilities, death probabilities, the probabilities of recover, uh, depends on, on the time and the, the certain probabilities, etc. So our model moved from a SIR to a SAIR. It become more more uh, more complex and more precise too. 
And, we, and now we have complex economic flows between all kinds of agents. We have basically the income and expense uh, 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 transactions between each kind of agents. So coming back to that, to our uh, shared environment, we have expense relationships, several expense relationships where agents are uh, expending money and income relationships where people are or people where the agents are earning money okay so we have the complex economic uh, flows between the several types of agents then our workflow of each agent become also much more complex now we have to consider if the person uh, has a house or if it's a homeless if it's employed or not, uh, if the people have contact with another pe person, or if, uh, if the person have contact with a business, uh, if, the, if, if it has uh, contact with the business, he's, it spends money, or with an infected person, it can be uh, infected, and so it goes. So the, 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 the workflow of each agent, that each agent is executed in each iteration, it's much more complex. And also we have much more parameters uh, for the, the simulation model. So we also divided these parameters in social and demographic parameters, in epidemiological parameters, and economical parameters, several, several. We can adapt these parameters to simulate small cities, a neighborhood, or a whole country. So uh, the model is also very uh, flexible. And we have the response variables that are very close to the first uh, model. The main difference is in the economical response variables. Now, the economical response variables are divided by the, by the type of the agent, uh, people, business, and government. So, in the paper, we simulate several scenarios. We simulate the old normal or the world without the pandemic. The do nothing that uh, the pandemic with any kind of social uh, intervention, total lockdown, conditional lockdown, vertical isolation, 50% of isolation, but without masks. Uh, no isolation, but with everybody using masks and masks and 50% of isolation. So, uh, I will change to a video here showing all the other video. This, you can see here how the agents no more walk freely over the uh, shared environment. The blue dots are houses, the purple dots are business, and you see that people uh, uh, walk from house to the business. The blue dots are, uh, are, the blue dots are infected people, the gray dots are uh, susceptible people, and the black dots are dead people. So here you can see, uh, and just to remember, we simulated two months and each iteration of the, the simulation corresponds to one hour. You can see here the contagious curve and the death curve, the hospitalized curve. And now in the economical impact, you can see this line here, where there's a great amount of exchanging of wealth. This is the payment day where the, the, the business have to pay the, the, the workers and pay the taxes and the, the money change of hands. 
So this is the second, this is a, just a, a, an example of the simulation with the COVID ABS 2.0. This is the do nothing scenario. We have here another scenario with par partial isolation. You can see that the people stay in their houses. 50% of the population stay at their, their houses and 50% uh, go to work and walk freely in the, the result time. So the contagion evolution is very different and the economical impact is also very different over the time. This is the payment day. Well, coming back, in our simulations, we can see uh, the evolution of the infection by each scenario. We can see that there are very, very uh, uh, deadly scenarios and some waters that are uh, minimize the number of deaths. But these scenarios where they uh, occur, the minimizations of the, the minimization of the number of deaths also broke the economy. And the, one of the objectives of this work is to think in the both sides. You can see here. The most, uh, the do nothing scenario is one of the death, the, the most deadly scenarios. Okay. Now you can see the economical performance of each scenario for uh, each kind of agent. So here we have a correlation of the increase of the uh, economical result and the percent of deaths of each scenario. Based on this, we can make, we can perform the, the decision making. Okay, we have a lot of variables, a lot of results a lot of scenarios, alternatives, and we have to put these scenarios uh, over the table and tell the public, uh, public managers to uh, decide what we want. This is, this uh, I'm talking about is the post-simulation. The post-simulation is to prescribe social interventions that, they, that control the epidemic evolution and minimize the economical impact. By prescribe, I mean create scenarios, simulate the scenarios, evaluate the scenarios, optimize the, the decision variables, and decide. So this can put over a wide, over a wide framework that include the simulation, that include Hello. And that includes. Okay, we with... hear you. Yes, we hear you, but you have one more minute. Two. Okay, <laughs> just to finish. All right. What's next? We have to uh, consider the secondary waves, waves and herd immunity. We have to consider the the people that uh, have sequels about the the, the COVID nineteen. We have to consider the reinfection and we have to consider the effects of the vaccine, the economical and how amount of people need to be uh, vaccinated to achieve global immunization. To conclude, we have a um, tool, the Asian based simulation. It's a flexible sim uh, uh, solution for simulating this kind of complex scenarios, not covered by this model-based simulations, and our tool, the COVID ABS package. Uh, it's a free and open source package. Uh, it also has its modeling changes, but we have some initial uh, results that are published with good uh, results. So I would like to thank you for the invitations ask you my apologies about my poor English and the time 
it's a lot of things to 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 say. It's uh, I ask you to read the, the 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 paper. That's a lot of information, and uh, it's possible to to achieve several discoveries uh, with this framework. And then all contributions, all questions, all criticisms, all feedback is welcome. Thank you, Niri. Thank you. D does anyone have any questions? The, the model is, is really fascinating. I think the, the only uh, thing that, that is not is relevant for Israel and also for Brazil is the politics. Oh. Because the politics always has a drift to things that are not always uh, scientific. Uh, but I think, uh, what, what do you think? Do you think the second wave will, will actually uh, depend differently? Or do you think the second wave uh, actually um, meets the agents as they met them the first time? Or are, because in Israel, they're talking about that we have the second wave now, and uh, the people are, the people, the agents, whatever, it's, it's the same thing in the model, are much less uh, harsh, are much more vulnerable. They don't react the same way as they do. Uh, do you take this into consideration? In that the agents are not that intelligent or not motivated as the first? Uh, no, the, the agents are, are naive. They are dumb agents. They are not uh, intelligent agents. But we consider to, to embed some intelligence in the agents. Okay. Well, the second wave is complex. The second wave uh, naturally emerged in some simulations we performed. When we first uh, performed the, the partial isolation with 40% uh, of isolation, we flattened the curve, avoided the... the, 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 the uh, contact. Yes, avoided the contact. But soon after this, we have a second wave after yeah. the, the first isolation. And when we, we, we put the conditions that finished the, the partial isolation, as soon as it finishes, a second wave started. So, uh, this arise, arise the question of the herd immunity. Yeah. How amount of the population needs, uh, needs to be recovered to avoid the, 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 the viral spreading? This is a, 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 an open question that we not uh, 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 that we not uh, simulate yet. But are you are you going to put in the vaccination into the model if you're going I, with the model? Because I think the vaccination will 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 actually bias the model a little bit. No, indeed, the, we can also simulate this because uh, in the model we can uh, configure, we can parameterize how amount of people start immunized at the beginning of the, 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 the simulation, how amount of people start uh, uh, infected, and how amount of people start uh, 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 susceptible. So we can simulate the vaccination. Okay. The, the, the question is different. The question is, we don't know the, the scientific literature, don't have, uh, don't know if the reinfection exists or not. There's no wide consensus. This changes everything. That's if the reinfection really exists, this changes everything in our model, because this it's another kind of model. Also, well, the model is recoverable. Our agents uh, uh, could not uh, uh, be uh, infected again, so yeah. it's easy to control this. But if the if the agents uh, could be infected again, so 
are completely different simulations. So there are there are some some uh, informations that uh, needs to be uh, uh, considered. Other 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 question: How efficient is the 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 vaccine? The vaccine is one hundred percent efficient. Is ninety percent efficient? Is eighty percent efficient? How efficient is the the, the vaccination? This also. Uh, it's a parameter that that uh, have influence in the simulation. So there are a lot of parameters that that can change. But the actual parameters, the simulations we performed, they show it to be very close to the reality. The what happens at least here in Brazil. Okay, we have uh, when we simulate the 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 the, the percent of social isolation, Brazil it's at about. Uh, 20 to 30 percent of social isolation and the rest is social distance and masks but with this uh, percent of social isolation there's no great difference of doing nothing it's very sad we have these cases in israel as well <laughs> i think if you there are only very uh uh several countries that if the the, they are told to put mask, isolate, et cetera, et cetera. They actually do it. Each country has this uh, feeling of that uh, it's not going to happen to them, it's, but it's, it's everywhere. It's the same in North and South Italy, the same. The Northern part is very uh, going through the rules. The, the North, Southern part, they do every, everything they want, but it's, it's part of, the, of being pe people, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Don't put in the chat. I, I will put the, the, the link of the, the, the link of the slides here. Okay. In the chat, okay? Okay. And uh, I, I, I can send it to all the people uh, as well. Okay. Okay, so I want to thank you very much for joining us and for giving this talk. It was very, very interesting. And, thank uh, uh, oh, thank you. I see now the, the chat. And uh, we hope uh, next time we meet, it's not going to be the topic of the talk. Okay. Gonna be, thank we're going to be free of COVID. Maybe we can meet Ooh. face to face and not uh, by Zoom. Yes, it's a great idea. <laughs> I really want to 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 travel to Israel. I I I have the dream to know your country. Really, one of the 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 place in the world I really want to visit. You're very very welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you for the invitation. Thank you for the attendance of everybody. Uh, sorry for the velocity. No, it's, it's a okay. lot of things to, 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 to say. It's Thank okay. you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. To Dale Kulam Shay, to Taftem, and Achno Beshabua, Beslicha Behodishaba, and the Beral Mashanikra explainable AI, the Kola Marhoche or Sotchlam Black Boxes. אז עכשיו יש מין טרנד כזה בשנה וחצי, שנתיים האחרונות, להתחיל לפתוח את זה ולהסביר את זה, ויהיה לנו עוד פרופסור קצת יותר מבוגר שיבוא וייתן לנו הרצאה על זה, גם כן הרצאה שהייתה ב-IEEE CDPR, ואני מקווה שנתראה אז. אז תודה רבה רבה שהגעתם, זה באמת... לא מובן מאליו שמכל הזום הזה והזום זום זום עוד יש לנו סמינרים בזום. אז uh, להתראות ותשמרו על עצמכם. הרבה בריאות לכולנו. תודה רבה. ביי ביי. ביי.